absolutely nothing better than having your friends stop by on the weekend. Good to see you. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of September 29th. Now, on all my shows, I do the same thing. I share hot penny stocks with you. I go searching every day across all the markets for any stock under five bucks that has potential to make us money. And when I do this search, I do it by looking at the charts first. I don't bother with the press releases or the filings until I find a chart that has heat. I'm looking for volume coming in or a big breakout setup or maybe a lot of big bounces back to back. Something, anything that makes that chart look hot. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to go through the company's filings and press releases looking for a catalyst, looking for a match to set that chart on fire. When I find one, voila, I've got myself a hot penny stock. I accumulate a whole bunch of these and then I narrow it down to three that I'm going to share with you. Now, let me make this perfectly clear. I am not claiming these are the cream of the crop or the best of the best. I'm just telling you, these are hot penny stocks in my opinion. And I've already done some due diligence for you, so I've given you a head start. First one we're going to take a look at is Origin Clear, ticker OCLN. Her chart exploded on Friday. She wasn't a typical breakout chart until she broke out. She jumped from 006 up to 1.8 cents. 300% gains, folks. She did fall back, but she kept 60% of her gains, and she is still over that 200. And she's got some hot news, folks. She's in the midst of some mergers. Yes, you heard me right. Mergers with an S. So OCLN, she finished today just a little over one cent and over 60% gains today. She is on the pink tier. She's current. But she's only got the transfer agent verified tick. We don't have the verified profile tick. We would like to see both of them because it's validated information and you don't get any validated information with pinks. That's what makes them risky. So seeing the two green ticks here takes away a lot of that risk. Not a deal breaker that the verified profile is in here, but we would like to see it. So what does Origin Clear do? Well, they're in the clean water business. They tell us here that America's infrastructure is broken and our government is spending nearly $100 billion to fix the nation's 150,000 plus water systems. But runaway inflation is defeating that effort. So local businesses are taking direct action to clean and recycle their own water. We're helping them cut the cord by developing outsourced pay per gallon programs and a dual digital currency to streamline investor payments and recruit participation in water projects. The company comes in and assembles these prefabricated water systems right on the company's property so they're purging their own water. No more do they have to go to the city. No more do they have to trust the city. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice! We got a good jump here, going from 404,000 shares to 3.4 million shares. We added 3 million shares on Friday. Share structure for Origin Clear. Outstanding share count is pretty high. We're at 1.2, 1.3 billion shares. The good news here is, is that the insiders, the management actually own more than half of them, 682 million, leaving us 615 million in the float. Not exactly a small float, but it's nice to see that the management is splitting all these shares with us. Financials for OCLN. Nice jump over the last two years. 2021, they were at $4.1 million. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2022, she jumped up over 150%, going to $10.3 million. Looking at her quarterly. Well, she dipped just a little bit this last quarter, about uh, just under $200,000, but... Her profits jumped $64,000 on less revenue. That's a nice formula they got going on there. Disclosures for the company. We've got an 8K here that just came out. This has to do with the news we're going to take a look at. And then we have their most recent financial. You want to know about the company? Don't go to Google. Don't be searching all their news presses. Just jump into a financial. They have everything they've ever done from the day they were incorporated. That's easy due diligence, folks. So let's take a look at that news now. 
So we've got two pieces of news here that are both related to the same thing. One came out on the 26th of this month and one came out on the 28th. Let's take a look at that 26th one. Origin Clear merges its water on demand and progressive water treatment subsidiaries. Consolidation intended to reinforce the value in potential merger transaction. So the company is going to take two of their own subsidiaries and bring them together. And then that new business is going to merge with a SPAC. They tell us down here that Origin Clear, the clean water innovation hub, announces that it recently merged its subsidiaries, Water On Demand and Progressive Water Treatment. The consolidation, which was approved by the Wody shareholders, is intended to create a better enterprise for value for a potential merger with Fortune Rise Acquisition. Fortune Rise Acquisition is a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. This is a company that comes onto the major exchange without any business. They're not making any revenues. All they do is secure a ticker and then they go out looking for a deal. They're looking for a company that wants to get on the major exchange, whether that be a private company or a company on the OTC that just wants to uplist. And then that company gets that ticker plus a big pile of money that the SPAC has been accumulating selling shares at $10 each. So we've got a merger of their subsidiaries. Then we have a merger with a SPAC and all of that is about ready to happen though. They haven't given us a date. Now we will get dividend shares once this happens. The ratio, we have no idea. They haven't given us the information, but we've got a heads up that a lot is going on with the company right now. They tell us that we believe we have created an outstanding enterprise value. PWT has a 25 year operating history, which is an invaluable in establishing credentials for this dynamic new venture. Lots of mergers moving up to the NASDAQ, dividend shares, and the stock is running. Can't think of any reason why we shouldn't be considering Origin Clear. I am so ready to do some charting. We're going to do this on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this free when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And that was free too. So we are looking at ticker OCLN Origin Clear. This is a six month, four hour view. We got a high back in January of two cents. And then we dropped about 350% down to low in April of 0056. Off of that low, she got excited. She bounced hard and went up over 200 and stayed up there for quite a while. But that's just too steep. She could not get solid footing and she slipped and fell. Gave it another attempt, still too steep. She slipped and fell and she's been under the 200 for a few months. And here recently, Friday, she jumped on the news, coming out from underneath all of her SMAs, crushing the 200, going from 0065 up here to 1.9 cents, virtually 300% gains, falling back down to just over a penny and still well over her 200. Our oscillators are outstanding. Every single one of them is pushing up right now and our RSI is in the overbought at 70. Looking good on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on for 19 days. She's been under the 200, just poking her head up to get a breath of fresh air occasionally. And on Friday, she did take off, hitting that 109, falling back to just over a penny. And she is on top of her nine day SMA. That is a perfect dip back. That's nice. All of our SMAs are curving up easily and gently, looking nice. Oscillators are still on fire. Everything is pushing up. Our RSI did take a big fall with the drop here, but she is starting to climb again and she's up there at 58. Five day, five minute. So there's a low of 0065. She took off, climbed really nice here. She started to pull back at 1015. She came down to that 50 day SMA and that's where she's sitting. She has tagged that a few times. She is under the nine day SMA. We need to get that price right up on top of that. You can't climb till you're on top of the nine. Our oscillators show that we've had a dip here. Everything has come underneath. We're waiting for it to come around. We can see our RSI is starting to push right now. So on the short chart, it looks like she's dipping on the long chart. She is tearing it up and we've got lots of great news. We have a merger of her two subsidiaries and a merger of those subsidiaries into a SPAC moving up to the NASDAQ, giving us dividends. Do you need any more catalysts than that folks? OCLN, 
Come on, put it on your watch list. Our next top penny stock presents us with a unique opportunity for gains. This is ticker STBX, Starbucks Group. She just reported financials August 29th, and they were good. All the numbers look great. Now, I haven't gone through a deep dive and gone through every sentence, but I didn't see any problems anywhere. And yet, the stock took a tumble. A tumble, it fell to hell. This thing went from $3.70 down to $0.81, cents, over 400% drop, and I can't find a reason. As a matter of fact, everything I see right now looks pretty decent. The financials were good. They just made an acquisition at the beginning of September, and they're generating $300 million of working capital. I don't know why it fell, but right now the technicals are turning up and she is starting to climb. This could be one heck of a recovery. So STBX, she finished the day at $1.04 with almost 27% gains. She is on the NASDAQ, a major exchange, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. There's no transaction fees trading major exchange stocks. Plus, you can trade this pre-market, after-market as well. No, you don't need any special permissions or even qualifications. Just get in there and start trading if you have a mind to do so. Only thing I've got to tell you is you've got to change the period for your order. It's not a day trade. It'll ignore your order if you just leave day in there. you got to have day plus EXT extension or GTC good till canceled plus extension without extension in there it will ignore your order so what does Starbucks do we're going to jump on over to the most recent news press to get a description the company is headquartered and works out of Malaysia they are a technology driven rapidly growing company with innovation as their focus Starbucks is aiming to be a comprehensive AI solutions provider within Southeast Asia and also engages in building a cash rebate, digital advertising, and payment solution business. They're virtually the PayPal of Malaysia. Their ecosystem targets micro, small, and medium enterprises that lack the bandwidth to develop an in-house data management system for effective marketing. The company connects retail merchants with retail shoppers to facilitate transactions through cash rebates offered by retail merchants on its GetBats website and mobile app. The company provides digital advertising services to advertisers through its CBATS website and mobile app and its GetBats website and mobile app and social media. The company also provides payment solution services to merchants. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, it's an increase. We've got about uh, almost 300% increase, jumping from 171,000 shares to 521,000 shares. No, they definitely are not big numbers. She's under the radar right now, but that doesn't change the chart. Looking at the share structure for STBX, only thing they tell us over here is the outstanding share count. That is about 45 and a half million shares. Don't know what the float is. It can be anywhere up to 45 million or it could be considerably less. And for those who do care, market cap for this company is 47 million. Looking at the financials for STBX. At the end of 2022, she had doubled what she had done in 2021, jumping from 3.1 million up to 7.1 million. And look at the profits. They got to keep almost 5 million of that. Quarterly, oh, we don't have anything here, but we do have that information available to look at. I jumped into one of their filings, which has a news press inside of it. They tell us here total revenue was $4 million for the six months ending March 31st, 2023, compared to $2.9 million. That is a 36% increase. Income from operations was $2 million, which was a 3.1 increase from $1.9 million. And net income was $1.4 million. That increased 8.6% from $1.3 million. Now, they're not huge increases, but they're not drops. They didn't lose money. So why this stock would have fell so hard, I really don't know. Taking a look at the disclosures. We do have a disclosure here I need to share with you. They had a deal. Couldn't find a news press on this. It was on September 1st, 2023. Starbucks Group Holdings, a Cayman Islands company, closed an acquisition 
for 51% of 180 holdings. Now I looked up 180 holdings to see what they do. They work in Malaysia with undisclosed products and services. So I have no idea. Obviously this company knows what's going on there. Um, one of these filings though does cover some more shares that they are putting on the market. Not just shares though. They are putting ordinary shares, preferred shares, debt securities, warrants, rights, and units. Units are shares and warrants put together. They're going to share a mixed bag of these and it is going to generate $300 million for them. So that's where they're going to get their working capital. I don't know how many shares they're going to add to the common share count that is going to lift the float, whatever that is. In either case, it's going to give them working capital. Now, taking a look at that news, we just covered one of them, Starbucks files for 300 million mixed shelf. And then this piece of news, which came out on September 5th, the company introduced GPT at the same time that they introduced this. The company is making waves with the launch of its groundbreaking Starbucks AI ViPro module. This innovative module introduces a text to video feature set to redefine content creation. I'm very interested in this folks. Check this out. The text to video feature within the Starbucks AI ViPro module is not just an addition, it's a revelation. It empowers content creators to seamlessly transmute textual instructions or scripts into captivating video content, fundamentally transforming the content creation landscape. I was just watching the other day a show about all these TikTok videos that have all these influencers on them. None of them are real. They're all fake people. They're AI generated. The voice is AI generated. It looked real to me. I thought these were real influencers like me, but they weren't. They were fake people, not pictures of real people. They were fake people and they were doing what I do. Yeah, I like this. They tell us here with the ability to swiftly convert text into visually engaging videos, Content creators now have access to a wealth of short video content at their fingertips. This efficiency drastically reduces the time required for video production. Each one of my videos takes a minimum of four hours to do, and they're roughly 30 minutes long. Making the go-to tool for the fast-paced world of social media content. I'm telling you, I'm liking this. I'll be looking this up. Oh, this is from Malaysia. Doggone it. Oh well, in either case, it is new technology that is being used. I don't know how far this company has gotten with it. I haven't seen any contracts or anything like that, but they've made a new acquisition. Don't know what they're going to do with it. They have this new technology that they're putting to use and it is being used and they're generating a lot of money that they're obviously going to be put into use. So I see a lot of potential here, especially after a hard hard crash. Now we're looking for that recovery. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're now looking at a one day, one year chart for Starbucks Group. This is ticker STBX. As you can see, she was growing for quite a while here, hitting a high at the end of July of 446. At that point, she started the fall. She came down and was hovering over a 200 day SMA here on August 29th when her good financials came out and the bottom fell out of her. She fell from $3.37 all the way down here to 81 cents from a high bubble to a low bubble right here at current times. Let's come on down to that six month, four hour view. So still our high bubble and our low bubble you can see that the volume was real strong back here, but it's been tapering off. And just here recently with the sell-off, the volume got very strong. But now with the buy back in, the volume's getting even stronger. Now she has just started to make her move. She was underneath every SMA. And right now it looks like she's on top of her 20. Yes, she is sitting on top of her 20 right now. And look at our oscillators. They show signs that she wants to change trend. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, has had that bend. It's about ready to do a crossover and start climbing. Our MACD is pushing hard towards that signal line, and she's been pushing up for quite a few days. And look at that RSI, folks. That took a serious jump, coming from 24 up to 50, and now pushing herself up to 54. Now, what I like here, you see this 
spread between this blue line going up and that red line going down? Well, that red line is my ADX. You can think of it as trend continuation. Whenever the trend changes direction, the line changes. You see how this was falling, 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 falling. We'll come straight down and you'll see the line change direction right at that point. And she kept going one direction until it changed right here. And then she changed direction again. It's not about if she's going down or up. It's just, did she change directions? Well, a pattern I always look for is the spread. When I see my PPO going up and I see my ADX red line going down and they're spreading, guaranteed 100% your price is rising. So this all looks good right now. Let's check out that 20 day, one hour view. Swooping down from $2.44, rolling, hitting this 200-day haul, very much like your 200-day SMA, except it puts more credence on current prices. You can see it just sat on top of that 200 haul. Had a bounce today, lots of volume, came back down, and she's just been climbing even after market hours, and volume has been growing through the day, and our oscillators have been growing through the day. Everything is pushing up right now and looking good. Five day, five minute. Had a big drop here from 113 down to 81 and a bounce off of that low bubble. Very hard, folks. She rocketed over that 200-day SMA, hit a high here at 10.30 in the morning, came down through her 50, through the 200 haul like a rubber ball on water, right? She came underneath it all and right back up on top. Big push to get up on top, fell back on, and now she's climbing. This is looking sweet, folks. Osculators are all pushing up right now. The RSI's cooled off a little bit, but come on, that chart looks nice. I like STBX, at least to watch it, folks. The recovery on this, she could go anywhere. Let's back this up. Just take a quick glance here at our four hour chart. So, gee whiz, right here, that's one of our supports up there at a dollar 89. Okay, it's a resistance, an SNR, a support and resistance. So, we're down here right now at a buck, and she looks like she could climb easily up to a dollar 90. That's our first resistance here. So, I would put this on my watch list, wouldn't you? I got another hot penny stock from the major exchange for you. This is Shift Technologies, ticker SFT. Now, her chart for all practical purposes is an atypical breakout chart that is in the midst of breaking out right now. You can see those green bars have curved up and they are pressing up against that 200-day SMA looking very promising. Now, the situation is we don't have a supreme catalyst. We have had some good news here recently, but nothing I would call super hot. But that's why I look at hot charts. That's the campfire. That's the real fire. The news is just extra wood to throw on the fire. And it doesn't matter if it's a big piece of wood or a little piece of wood. If you have more, the fire will grow as long as you have a fire burning. And we do. So SFT, she finished the day at $1.60 with over 17.5% gains. And as I said, she is on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. So what does Shift Technologies do? Well, they buy and sell used cars online. Shift Technologies, together with its subsidiaries, provides an e-commerce platform for buying and selling used cars, both retail and wholesale. But that's not all they do. The company also provides value-added products, such as vehicle service contracts, guaranteed asset protection waiver coverage, wheel and tire coverage, prepaid maintenance plans, and appearance protection plans. They also assist their customers with insurance and loans. In addition to that, they are involved in the sale of used vehicles through wholesale auctions or directly to wholesalers. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's an increase about 250% jumping from 123,000 shares a day for the last 30 days up to 423,000 shares on Friday. Now, these are low numbers, but that is two and a half times her normal volume. And when you're dealing with a market that has real low volume, and all the markets do right now, it's really not about the numbers. It is about the percentage. Are they getting more people looking at them? And SFT is. Looking at the share structure for the company, all we get is the outstanding share count here, about 17 million. 
which wouldn't be a bad float if that was the entire float, but it's going to be less, hopefully a lot less. And the market cap for this company is at $27 million. Looking at the financials for SFT. Whoa! Back in 2020 and 2019, they were doing less than $200 million. Don't forget those three zeros, right? 2021 and 2022, they jumped significantly up to $630 and $670 million. On the quarterly, uh, well, look at that. A year ago, they were making a heck of a lot more money than they are now, and they have been dropping quarter after quarter. Right now, we are down to $47 million. Let's take a look at those disclosures because there is a piece of information over here I need to share with you. As I said, the company has been having a hard time financially. They've been accumulating a lot of debt, so they're working on that. So on September 5th, the company announced that they had sold their Portland-based vehicle storage and sales facility, and they had let go 25% of all of their workforce. That ended up saving them $23 million. That's the good news, folks. There's not anything else I can tell you. Business is going on as usual. They're just cutting down the debt, and they got $23 million now, and they've gotten rid of that asset that they were having to take care of. So we don't have anything else to look at except the chart. Let's go look at the chart. Let's take a look now at SFT, Shift Technologies. This is a six-month, four-hour view. It was back in February, we hit a high of $4, and in April, we hit a low of $1.06. Now, take notice here. Every single time the price was underneath the 200, it broke out. There's a second one. There's a third one. And how about this one right here? Looking good, isn't it? She has come down, rolled around, pushed herself right up to that 200 and has just pulled back a little bit after market hours. She is above her nine day SMA with volume growing over the last 12 days. Every single SMA is pushing around and up right now and she is about ready to break through that 200. Our oscillators look great. PPO, MACD, all pushing up. RSI was virtually at 80. It has fallen back down to 67, but the chart is still looking very luscious. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we had a break through the 200 here, a couple of rolls here, hit this low bubble and bounced up, and it is flat as it can be, the 200 right now. Once it was flat, she had no problem getting up there, stepping on it, and jumping. And she jumped high. She was down here at $1.22 and went to $1.63. And as you can see, our 200 was rolling down, leveled out, and is now rolling up. Every single SMA is in the right place, all pushing up. Our 9-day SMA is kind of high. She's kind of pulled away from the 20-day SMA, so you may want to watch that come back down and tag that. That would probably be a good buy-in price. Oscillators were very strong, but the aftermarket pull-down is cooling them down right now. Looking at our 5-day, five 5-minute. Five well, that's not a bad chart. We got a low bubble in this corner of $1.12 and that high of $1.63 there. She was climbing all five days. Came on top of that 200-day SMA and never touched it again. One bounce and boink, she's off and running on the 50-day SMA. Right here, she graduated, skipped the 20, and went straight to the 9. Talk about a light price. It wanted to climb. Got up here, hit that high bubble, er, stopped climbing. That's as far as she was going to go, but she didn't fall. She went sideways waiting for these SMAs to catch up. And once she hit the 50, surprisingly, she dipped. I was not expecting that, but that's what she's done. And we've got quite a few lower lows here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this come down to that 20-day SMA on the one-hour chart. It could come down to the 200 here. Very well could. And if it did, I would expect it, really expect it to bounce off of this and take off. But again, we aren't looking at a company that has a big catalyst. They've just got some good news out there. They're taking care of debt. The chart is hot, though. We're going to see, does a little piece of news really work on a hot chart? There are three more hot penny stocks I hope you're putting on your watch list. You know, when you put them on your watch list, don't take them off the very next day if it didn't run. 
A lot of these stocks need a day, two, maybe three days. The charts are hot, but that doesn't guarantee they're going to run the very next day. We've had some great runners this last week of stocks we've looked at. Vism is a good example, V-I-S-M. And oh yeah, what about uh, OP? Oh my God. <laughs> So please, folks, put these on your watch list and don't be in a hurry to take them off. And please do more due diligence behind mine because the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.